this year, as in 2014, when I chose the Team E Etudes at that time, the snare drum etude comes from the Solo Snare Drummer book by Vic Firth. And like 2014, this etude is based off of a well-known snare drum excerpt used in many orchestral auditions. Etude number 10 is based off the fourth movement from William Schumann's Third Symphony. The most important aspect to consider with the snare drum etude is always play with a great sound quality. Don't overplay the instrument with harsh downstrokes when you play those louder dynamics. Secondly, and although quite obviously, learn to play the correct rhythms at a steady tempo. Practice slow at first to develop those good habits with accurate execution. At the beginning, there should be a very clear delineation between the dotted eighth, sixteenth note figures and the triplets. There should not be a swing feel to the dotted eighth, sixteenth note figures. So let me demonstrate the opening here. As stated in the notes of the top of the page, pay close attention to the quarter note triplet figures in measures 33 to 44. If counting in a 6-4 meter, every quarter note triplet will receive one beat. And then you can subdivide the eighths and the eighth note triplets correctly. Refine your stickings and then write them in. This will ingrain consistency with your practice sessions. And then repeat short phrases to ingrain these positive habits. Like every other piece, repetition is key, repetition is key, repetition is key. With this etude, dynamics and playing areas are really important because there's so much of a wide range of dynamics. This piece is so interesting with that dynamic contrast. So strive for consistency in a wide contrast throughout the entire piece. Every pianissimo should sound the same, and there should be a clear difference between forte and fortissimo for measures 33 through 36, and then into measure 37. This is what will make a huge difference in your performance. Go for every minute detail. The dynamics also help us to see that the peak of the etude occurs in measure 37. Play with a full sound, but again, don't overplay the drum. Let the sticks rebound and listen to the sound quality of the instrument so you retain the true characteristic drum sound. You will maintain this legato flow of the etude by allowing the sticks to rebound off the head. In regards to playing areas on a concert snare drum, I usually aim for just off center when the dynamics are mezzo forte and above. This gives me a full resonant sound. When I play directly in the center, I'm going to get a really staccato sound, and this, that isn't required for this etude. When playing the soft sections, I choose to play just off of the edge, but not so close that I get a thin sound. Again, I'm using my ear to help me decide how close, how far away from the edge I should play. The drum is in tune, has a good snare tension. You should, be, you should be able to hear every stroke clearly at all the dynamics. So let me give you a couple practice tips to playing soft. First, play soft all the time. I know this sounds very simple, but it's true. We don't do this enough. But for this piece, when you learn how to play soft at all, with all kinds of different warm-ups, your hands are going to develop those chops to be able to play the etude. Secondly, play your warm-ups at pianissimo. Use any of your drumline warm-ups as a great starting point. Play them all at a soft dynamic on a concert snare drum. Lastly, play the entire piece at pianissimo. Ignore the written dynamics and just play softly. This will train your muscles to play with a good control at these softer dynamics. Details will make a huge difference in your overall performance. The clarity of the embellishments is really important. I aim for only two notes on the drags, so there's a difference between those notes and the short and separated quarter note rolls throughout the piece as well, which I aim for a buzz quality 
for those, quarter, those short quarter note rolls. Mark the phrases to allow the piece to breathe. Changes in the dynamics usually mark those different phrases, so be sure to anticipate those changes. Also, another practice method, practice with your hands separate, especially some of the more intricate passages, measures 99 and through 20, and also measures 25 through 33. For the rolls, make note that most of the rolls are not connected to a release note. When this occurs, end the roll with a short buzz to create a short space before that next stroke. And also make note that there's one errata change to connect the release note into measure 33. To me, I felt like that allowed that end of the phrase um, into those quarter note triplets to make more sense. There are a few different approaches for the roll check patterns because of the wide dynamic range executed in a very short time frame, specifically in measures 25 through 32. You can attempt to keep the check pattern uh, rhythm the same throughout. This can be triplets, eighth note triplets, fivelets, or eighth notes. I prefer to play these roll check patterns based on the dynamics of if it's louder, I'm gonna play a little bit faster check pattern, and if the rolls are softer, I'm gonna play a little bit slower check pattern. So for the three loud rolls that don't change dynamics, measures 22 and 40, I play with the eighth note triplet check pattern. That's gonna allow that to drive and to create more volume out of the drum. However, when the dynamics do change suddenly, I actually use a fivelet for the roll that crescendos and eighth notes for the rolls that decrescendo. This allows for a smooth sound as I get softer, but also gives me direction for the rolls as I get louder. I also marked my music to make sure I know what rolls are fives, eighth notes, and those sextuplets. So let me demonstrate the check pattern measures 31 through 33. I'm gonna do that without the snares and a little bit slower tempo. So when I have this check pattern it allows me to control and exaggerate the contrast of those dynamics. For the pulse, finally, I recommend using metronome games with this etude. Put the click on just beat one or just beat two if we're thinking of cut time. Maybe just the upbeats for thinking in cut time also, or even maybe every third beat, or maybe every downbeat, every two measures. As you put more space between the metronome clicks, you can now use the metronome as checkpoint to check your timing instead of having it like a teacher telling you exactly when you play. That allows you to develop that internal sense of pulse. So when you take the metronome away, you've developed that pulse to allow you to perform at a really high level. I love this etude, short and sweet, but there's a lot packed into it. Have fun with it, enjoy it, and good luck on all of your audition processes.